Have you ever wanted to be a video editor or are you looking for a video editor? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be interviewing my own video editor to share with you tips and tricks on what it's like working with video editor and what he has to share on his experiences as being a video editor. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome Harvin onto the video today. So for the first question we have for you today is how did you get started in video editing? I think this is probably like a route that a lot of video editors maybe have gone through, but I started off kind of when I was really young, I would like whenever we'd go on like a family vacation, we'd have these photos and like videos and I would put them through like Windows Movie Maker at the time when I was uh, using that. So, you know, just put in a bunch of photos, videos, and just like add some simple transition and then overlay some music. Um, so that's kind of when I really kind of like got into like the video editing world, technically, I guess. So it was mostly like a slideshow PowerPoint at that point, to be honest, because it was yeah. just a bunch of different <laughs> transitions. So I don't know if I would count that, but then that was kind of like when I really kind of started and then I kind of moved my way up with different platforms and stuff like that. With regards to like learning how to video edit and stuff, YouTube was like my best friend. Google, YouTube have been amazing. So you can literally find anything on YouTube or Google if you search up. And there's always people constantly, like there's channels dedicated to video editing and they're constantly giving you tips and tricks on what's, for example, what effects are trending. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Sam Colder. He does like a lot of these uh, transitions and stuff like that. So there's people who literally like watch his videos every single day and then they'll like show you how to do it on <laughs> on like a simpler level, so which is really cool. So what have kind of been your experiences as a freelance video editor? Yeah, so just a little background, I guess, for me is like, I've been editing videos, but I never really dived into the freelancing world until this year. So Tyler was actually like my first the real like client <laughs> per se, I guess, uh, as a freelancer when I started on Upwork, at least. I would say like the pros are just like, it's kind of really cool to have like a variety of different work you can work with and like the people you meet, so many different people that you probably wouldn't have if you we're just kind of working on with a single person. So this whole freelancing thing, you have like a variety of projects that you want to work on and it's all up to you, right? So you can choose what you want to work for. Like if you want to do something with regards to YouTube or, or advertising, whatever floats your boat, you can kind of do that. So it's really flexible and that works. And I, I guess the con would be if you are looking for something more stable, some months you can have like a lot of projects, you'll be overwhelmed. And then some months it might be a little bit slower every month. So if you're looking for more of a stability of like, I want to make this much money every month or every week, then it might not be unless you can find the right client who is willing to make videos and, and willing to pay for that, that could work mm. out. For example, I'm sure if you work for like a big YouTuber who has deep pockets, for example, like I'm assuming if you work for like Logan Paul or like KSI, <laughs> one of those people, I'm sure like they have one or two editors and they're willing to pay them on a continuous basis because they're constantly producing videos in that sense. So yeah, if you get one of those jobs, then you're pretty good. <laughs> uh, but how to yeah. get those jobs yeah i'm not too sure so, <laughs> more to follow <laughs> I, i'm sure it'll happen for you you're, you're extremely <laughs> talented so like i know in our kind of dynamic i usually listed what the price was to charge and everything yeah. but have you kind of encountered negotiating with people it really depends right it's like how do i know if i'm really good and how much i can really charge in that sense when i first started off i was really kind of just looking at what other freelancers would charge and i was like all right this is kind of like the end that i can charge because it really depends on your your country and where you live too right because some people are charging really little but they're living in other countries for example right if these people are charging this much i can probably charge five hours less because i'm pretty brand new to this industry in this space at least for upwork so why not charge that much so i kind of started off with that so i didn't really negotiate too much actually and then as i kept going so with my agency that I'm, I'm working with at the moment he gave me like a decent rate in the beginning right so I was pretty happy with that and then mm -hmm. as I kept going on they increased it which was pretty cool so I wouldn't say there's like too much negotiating that it needs to be done if your work shows for it usually they'll kind of know and and even if you ask for it unless you ask for like something outrageous like you're asking for like 100 dollars <laughs> an hour and you just started out recently then maybe you yeah. have a little bit harder time but if you if you're pretty decent at what you do and they like what you do and both mesh together, then I, I think you have a fair chance of getting what you deserve. Have you noticed that it feels like competitive in the market to get like gigs and all that? Or it's been pretty easy? Upwork and Fiverr, they operate in different kind of ways. So I find Upwork is pretty cool for anyone who's starting off, at least because you're able to apply for as many jobs as you want. You can kind of figure out what jobs work for me. Whereas on Fiverr, as far as I've known, it's kind of based on an algorithm, right? So like you'll be listed at the bottom because you're just started off you don't have any orders you don't have any reviews so you're really brand new to this thing 
And as you keep going up, it works in your favor because the algorithm is doing most of the work. You don't have to apply for jobs. So if you can really leverage that Fiverr algorithm and get a lot of reviews and get a lot of orders, then it's kind of like, I wouldn't say passive income, but like you're getting money without even doing a lot of work to get the jobs because people will automatically find you, right? If you just type in video editing for YouTubers, you'll probably list up at the top if you have a lot of reviews and a lot of orders and a lot of happy customers. But if you're just starting off, you'll be at the bottom so no one will really find you. So that's where Upwork kind of helps because you can apply for the jobs at least. So does it cost money to apply? Let's say I apply for uh, your job and I get like an interview because there's, there's a couple of levels in the Upwork thing. You first get the interview and then you get the job. So if you get the interview, you actually get your connects back. So let's say if your oh. job costed six connects, let's just say, for example, and I got an interview with you, like you requested an interview with me, I'd get my six connects back. So like if you apply to jobs that you think you're actually skilled for and you do get the interview, you'll get those refunded back. Now, if you keep it just applying to jobs, like out of the blue, just every time you're just applying to every job, then yeah, you probably will have to probably pay for some connects. If you fill out your profile, like 100%, you get connects. So there are ways to get connects for free. I have 112 connects and an average job is around like four to five connects, I would say. What's kind of like the work-life balance for you with your full-time job and then video editing, but then also just having a life outside of it? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it, it, it definitely could be tough if you're like a really um, workaholic kind of person. <laughs> like there's an unlimited opportunities really. You can apply for as many jobs. There's always people looking for it. So you can work as much as you want, but then you got to step back. What I try to kind of do is I try now to take off the weekends a little bit to kind of just like refresh myself along with my other jobs. So it, it's been working pretty good now. Uh, at one point it was a little bit tough because I was, I was <laughs> doing like a lot of things on Upwork and I was also doing things with the agency. And then, yeah. so that was a little bit tough, but now it's kind of, kind of figured it out and it's kind of just getting to that routine um, yeah. and what works. And once you kind of figure that out, then it's not bad. And then how long does it usually take you to edit a video? So it really depends. Like some videos I've, I've done them in a couple hours and then some videos it take like a couple of days for videos. Like for example, Tyler's, it really depends on the kind of edits that I would do specifically, but I'd say around like the two to three hours. I'm not sure if a lot of video editors do this, but I really want to make sure it's perfect. So I'll watch the video multiple times throughout and I want to make sure that I got everything properly. So like while it's in my premiere thing, I'll probably watch it like four or five times. So depending on the length of the video, if it's like 20 minutes, I'll like watch it like a couple of times and then I'll render and then I'll watch it a couple of times just to make sure that I've hit everything and there's no weird gaps or anything like that. So that kind of takes a long time. And then trying to just figure out new ideas to implement into the video takes time too. Really the cutting though, it's not too bad. Like for example, yours, you're really good at talking. So it's, you don't actually do that much cutting, but obviously if someone's not like the best at talking to you, then you know, there's a lot of cutting that you have to do. I will say from a customer perspective, the fact that you like rewatch and everything is huge because I know a lot of people that are trying to hire video editors, they kind of want to just take that end product the second they're done editing it and be able to upload. And I've been able to only do that with you and not really with any other video editor that I've experienced. Yeah. And I can tell because you're, you're probably rewatching them, like you said. So that's huge. And that's like also what helps me want to keep someone around. Because if I'm having to go back in and edit all of it, then it's like, what's the point? So yeah, yeah. That, that's no, a huge I'm thing. Yeah. So I, re I really appreciate that. For sure. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's the, that's where it takes a lot of time, but to be honest, yeah. it's, it's worth it with returns to like clients. I've had super amazing people that are like willing to even talk about other things rather than even just like the, the project based things. So like when we started off, we were talking about like stocks. Yeah. And <laughs> so that's like, that's like, it's like kind of building that relationship rather yeah. than just more about the client. And even with my other people that I've worked with up or like, you can kind of build like those really cool, neat connections that you probably would have not been able to do. But I've heard a lot of stories where some people they'll like do the work and they'll be good. And then they get like a bad review for whatever reason. And that kind of hurts your profile. So that is one thing on Upwork or Fiverr that could hurt your profile. If you think you did such a good job and they don't really reciprocate. What kind of helps you stand out from the competition where it's like kind of how you go about your video editing or pricing or what are kind of your tactics with that? I would say in the beginning, it would be a lot of various things. Pricing helps, right? Because if you can just become a little bit under, like grab the initial and build that resume of yours. It's like mm -hmm. with any job, right? Even a nine to five job, you want to kind of build your experience and stuff. Um, but I would say also just like constant learning and learning from like YouTube or Google or even taking a course. If you're constantly learning and learning about new trends and stuff, that really puts you ahead because you're up to date. Because a lot of people these days I see on Upwork too, it's like TikTok editors, right? Like people want to yeah. have that. So if you're like up to date with those kind of things, you can really leverage that. And if you watch those 
TikToks or videos and stuff like that, or YouTube videos. And if videos are working the 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 person, then obviously why wouldn't they not continue your business with you? So mm -hmm. so I will say this too, because when I did post the job and there's 25 people that applied, but the reason why you're standing out was because you had actual videos for your portfolio. And I know you mentioned who you used to do a couple of video edits for. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's a really credible source. So <laughs> I was like, let's give this a shot because you don't know what the dynamics can be like. You don't want to test everyone that applies because that could be a lot of going through people. So that's at least how you stood out to me initially. And then your work just spoke for itself after the first initial test. I'm assuming if you charge less and you can rack up those reviews and rack up that stuff, you'll be kind of better in the algorithm. Even with Upwork, I noticed actually like when I was using Upwork a lot, I started randomly getting job applications without me even applying. Like people are reaching out to me because I'm not sure how it works on your side as like mm -hmm. a person who's looking for a freelancer, but I think you can like invite people to your job. Yeah. I'll show you like the most relevant. So I guess I started getting invited to people because Upwork was looking and they're like, oh, this guy's completing a lot of jobs and, and stuff like that. So let's rank him more up than other people because I was mm -hmm. continuously working a lot. But then I get it close to like, you know, how much could you work, right? <laughs> so you don't want to overburn yourself. Yeah. 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 Can continuously work and being consistent at it. You, you can, you can do, you can do really good things. I think at one point and maybe still now, but you, I think you have that like rising talent badge now on your profile or something, which I was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's got that. So, cause that means they're trying to push you, which is good. Yeah. So yeah. I guess that's good and bad. Like you said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really depends on what you're trying to, you're trying to make this full time. <laughs> go crazy yeah. you know what i mean yeah but yeah. <laughs> yeah your favorite way to book a video editing gig sounds like you preferred upwork over fiverr i think it really depends on people but i i like upwork in the sense that sorry i can i can apply to the jobs that i kind of feel like i'm good at whereas fiverr people would reach out and obviously you can filter out like i don't want to work with you or, or whatnot especially since i'm pretty new to this so like my fiverr account probably isn't ranking as good and i haven't been doing too much work on it too so that's also a key factor but mm -hmm. being able to apply to what you want to apply to. So having that control is kind of nice in that sense. Has like any agency tried to reach out to you or have you tried to reach out to an agency? Like, cause I know there's like some video editing agencies out there, but I also feel like that'd be kind of brutal at the same time. So I haven't, I haven't been reached out to an agency. Like I, I work for a marketing agency now, uh, but it's not a video editing agency. So there's like three of us that just edit videos for a marketing agency. And that I actually got that job through Upwork. He prefers to hire on Upwork cause he finds that it's been really successful for him and he's been able to find like top talent through that so a lot of his employees actually that are now full-time with him are through upwork which is kind of cool oh uh, yeah wow so i guess for some people it works out really well and some people it doesn't but yeah he's yeah. like uh, if you go to his thing he's like huge spender on upwork like it's like a hundred wow. thousand or so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I was looking at like his rates and everything. I was like, I don't got that kind of money. I was like, <laughs> I'm glad for Harvard. I can't, I can't keep up with this, but I am, I'm super happy for you, dude, because I know you work so hard. So, but yeah, and maybe he'll uh, take you on full time. Maybe he'll give you like some insane offer. Uh, yeah, who knows, right? So, yeah, his, his office is in Florida, so that'd be nice. Oh, <laughs> that would be nice. Can't complain with good yeah, weather. Yeah, can't complain of the warm weather. <laughs> what do you wish that more clients would be aware of when working with video editor? Because I know like sometimes, you know, they just give you the footage and just expect you to figure it out. So like, what are some kind of tips you could give customers to be kind of better, you know, interaction with you and the video editor, I guess? I'm not saying this because we're talking, but I think yeah. you did like a, an amazing job in like providing direction but also giving like me that like creative control so like the videos that you would send me would help so much like even though there are like five six minutes videos like it would just give me like nice clear direction on what you're looking for because obviously at the end of the day you want to make sure that um that you're happy right as, as a video because mm -hmm. you're the one who's going to be posting or whatnot whatever doing it with it so giving that direction and also giving that creative control to the video editor kind of gives the best of both worlds so you know like what they're kind of expecting and then you can also surprise them with whatever you do. So that was really helpful. Like when I would get those videos and you kind of show me like, this is what I'm looking for. Can you blur out this section? Because a lot of times, sometimes you wouldn't know what you want blurred out or what, like, what your preferences are. So that just helps with speed and knowing what to do. And then ultimately also like less revisions at the end because they're just already happy with what you've done. So I think mm -hmm. that's really like the best both worlds where do you see video editing in the future like do you think agencies are going to take over is there going to be a little bit of automation happening where people don't really need video editors where do you kind of see that from like a video editor perspective it depends on what industry obviously like movies and 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 film and tv shows and even youtube it's like 
really taking off in terms of everyone's trying to get into making videos. And there will always be people looking for video editors. And if you can make a name for yourself, it all comes down to networking again. If you want to get to like more of the like the KSI and Logan Paul kind of thing, that's more like of networking. I doubt they go on Upwork and look for a video <laughs> editor. <laughs> I'd be very surprised if you do. But yeah, if you can like really make a name for yourself, you can stand out. And that's just with continuous work and and continuously improving. But I'd say in terms of competition, it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're generally just trying to make like a little side hustle money, I think there's perfect opportunity with Upwork and, and Fiverr. You can just find gigs here and there whenever you're whenever you have a free moment but if you're looking for more of a full-time then i think it, it could be a little bit harder in in that sense unless you can get with the right people and, and then that would work out in your benefit this is actually a question that came from a bunch of youtubers from the channel and just a question i had is like what are your favorite video editing applications but then also like what tools you use to even video edit it i primarily use premiere pro and after effects and then i just recently actually started getting into final cut pro because it just like works better with my mac it's really easy to edit but i would say premiere pro is really good because you can transfer that skills kind of towards after effects and after effects is like where you can really get those deep edits so if you're really looking to make just simple edits Final Cut Pro, even iMovie would work in that sense too, if you're just trying to make simple cuts. But if you want to get into like the green screen and stuff like that, I'd say Premiere Pro and Final Cut would be really good. I know Final Cut is like connected to motion. They have like this After Effects platform. I haven't really oh, dived into okay. it, but I know After Effects is like the more utilized in the industry. And then in terms of if you're really trying to go into like film and TV and, and movies, I think they use like Avid. So I haven't really touched that yet, but After Effects and Premiere been pretty good so in terms of sites you can use motion ray and then you can also find a lot of things on youtube for free so i know a lot of people are talking about davinci resolve is that something you've been curious about I, yeah exploring? i have that i have actually heard that too um i just think i haven't really actually dived into it but it looks pretty cool it's funny because it's like i've now been using final cut a lot and then when i go to premiere pro i'm like ah I got to search up some tutorials on simple yeah. things that I used to be able to do before because I'm getting so familiar with this. Or even keyboard shortcuts. Like when I'm trying to cut something, I'll go in Premiere Pro and then I'll go in Final Cut. It's different. That's just also yeah. being, just being really lazy and I got to just figure out my keyboard shortcuts. Yeah, I definitely want to learn that too. That'd be really uh, cool. I'm not sure how many assets are are available for that yet. Are you thinking about getting the M1 MacBook eventually? Because that would be a beast for Final Cut Pro. Yes, I heard about that. Yeah, so I do want to get a new... Mac, because I've had this for a bit now. So yeah, the M1 Mac would be nice. I'm just trying to figure out what would be best because I know the M1 Mac for the price, as well as when you want to get a Windows, you can yeah. definitely get like a pretty nice Windows computer, even a desktop, like full fledged. And then Premiere Pro and After Effects should work pretty well on it, I'm assuming. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just trying <laughs> to figure out what the way the pros and cons of of what what not. So because I know on Windows you can like it's impossible to get Final Cut. So. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have both. I even have my Mac right here and my Dell computer. So it's always like a hard battle figuring out both. But now, like, I think I've just committed to going towards like PC instead of like uh, the Mac. Oh, it's so much. It's yeah. so much cheaper. It's it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll save a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like also like the Office applications, they just look nicer to me on like the PC version versus yeah. the Mac. But that's just like a nitpick thing visually. But it's whatever. Yeah, you just got to get used to it, I guess. And Apple does a really good job at like connecting everything with your iPhone, with your Mac. Oh, yeah. Like AirDrop is my favorite feature. I, I have yet to like figure out how to get away from that because it's just such a game changer. I've put a poll on my YouTube. So someone's asking, how do you figure out the right music track? Yeah, music takes a long time, I would say to just find something that works with it. And it's also difficult if you don't have one of those like motion ray or or art list and stuff like that. So that's a little bit difficult, especially because on YouTube, you don't want to get copyright or get a strike on your account at least. So I'd say finding like channels, there's so many channels out there that have copyright free music and subscribing to them and just listening to them in your free time. People keep mentioning DaVinci Resolve. They're like, why would you not choose a free video editor over like a paid one? Oh, is, is DaVinci yeah. Resolve free? It is free. There's like a pro version. So I think that's why most people are using it. But it seems like for you, it's worth the investment for those mm -hmm. video editors, I'm assuming. Yeah, I find on Upwork and even like these things, they're very common in like After Effects and Premiere Pro if you, and Final Cut. So those are like the three main ones that I find if you have, if you're really good at them, you can kind of boost those on your resume per se. And I found like those are like really industry standards in terms of video editing. Like if you know that you, you should be good for a wide variety of jobs. That's pretty much all the questions we had. Thank you very much for having me.
I really yeah. appreciate it. This is, this is super cool. I like talking about this kind of stuff. All right, you guys. So that was my interview with my video editor, Harvin. If you guys did like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you could subscribe, I would greatly appreciate the support. But without further ado, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I hope to see you guys in future videos. Thanks. Thank you.